Hello everyone, my name is Maddie and this is my Marvel comic breakdown. Welcome back to my series where I delve into the world of Marvel Comics and break down 20 classic issues. In this second episode, I'll be diving into more of the iconic stories that have been defined in the Marvel Universe. So sit back, grab your favorite Marvel issue, and join me as I explore the next comics in this series. These next six comics in this video are in the Daring Mystery Comics number three. These were all released in January of 1940. We're starting with the B story titled The Miracle City. We don't know who the author was, but we do know that the art was done by Jack Binder. It is placed in the 4040 universe. It's about a man named Breeze Barton who was shot down over Africa by the Japanese army in 1945. He crash landed in the desert and wandered through the barren wasteland until he stumbled upon a mysterious city called the City of Mirage. As he was being taken care of by a woman named Anne Barclay, she explained to him that the city was a timeless realm that nobody could escape. However, their peaceful city was successfully attacked by a prehistoric creature, and Breeze decided to help the soldiers fight off the creature. During the battle, he came up with an idea of using magnetism to reverse the polarity of the portal to allow them to travel back to Earth. Breeze shared his idea with the great scientist Zanoba, but they were interrupted by an attack from the demon people ruled by Mubhan. Mubhan kidnapped Zanoba to steal the information from his mind. Determined to save Zanoba, Breeze led an army into the realm of the demon people and successfully rescued Zenoba, freeing their slaves in the process. After the battle was over, Barton and Zenoba began working on the magnetism device to try and return to Earth. When he asked Anne if she would join him on his journey, she agreed to go with him. That's the story of Breeze Barton and his journey to the City of the Mirage. It's a thrilling tale of adventure, heroism, and bravery, and it just goes to show that sometimes the most unexpected things can lead to incredible experiences. The next comic is titled Mystery of the Swabert Mansion. This comic was written by Will Harr and illustrated by Maurice Gutworth. It's about a man named Dennis Burton who meets with Commissioner Herrick and learns about a police case involving a man named Mr. Swabert. Swabert's home plans were recently stolen to find the location of his late father's hidden money, and the thief was making death threats to Swabert if he didn't reveal the location of the money. Swabert insisted that he didn't know where the money was, and Dennis decided to take action as the Purple Mask and investigate the situation to stop the crooks from murdering Swabert. He arrives at Swabert Mansion just in time to prevent the man from being doused with poison gas rigged into his phone when the midnight deadline hits. He then begins searching the secret passageways for the crooks. During a gunfight, a secret switch is activated from a ricocheting bullet, revealing a secret room where the fortune has been hidden. The money is surrounded by a drawbridge and a moat of acid, and two of the mobsters are guarding it. Dennis guns down the rest of the men and rushes into the room. One of the crooks is so scared that he jumps into the acid, facing a painful death. The remaining crook is threatened to be thrown into the acid as well, so he surrenders and confesses his crime. And that's the story of Dennis Burton as the purple mask. He saved Mr. Swabert and solved the case. It's a thrilling story of bravery, quick thinking, and heroism. And it just goes to show that sometimes one person can make all the difference. The next comic is titled The Phantom Reporter. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Sam Cooper. It's about the Phantom Reporter, a slacker cub reporter who seems to solve mysteries whenever he investigates them. The Daily Express editor sends him to investigate a series of home invasions and murders in the east side of the city, even though he's not the best reporter. When the parks commissioner warns him not to follow the story, Dick decides to continue anyway. When his boss's home is broken into, Dick puts on his Phantom Reporter persona and beats up the thugs that come to rough up his boss. However, rival papers start beating the Daily Express making the editor believe that they are in on the crime. Dick hangs out in front of the last attacked home, attracting the attention of some thugs who beat him up and told him to get lost. Changing into his phantom reporter persona, Dick chases after them and beats them all into submission, learning that the plot was orchestrated by the parks commissioner, chief of police, and the publishers of the record and the telegram. The group planned to influence people to move out of the east end of the city so they could buy up the property cheaply and convert it into parkland for a hefty profit. With the conspiracy revealed, the phantom reporter tracks down on all those responsible and beats them into submission again, leaving them for the authorities. Later, the editor's words come true and Dick gets the scoop into the paper and the mystery is solved. The fourth comic is called The Devil and the Nazis. This comic was written and illustrated by Joe Simon. It is about the exciting adventure of Trojak, the white jungle man, and his quest to rescue his friend Edith, Alton, from the clutches of the Nazis. It all begins when Trojak's tribe is attacked by a prehistoric monster and they ask for his help. Trojak and his animal companion, Baloo, confront the creature, but their weapons are ineffective against it. Nonetheless, they manage to chase the creature away and Trojak leads his tribe to the monster's cave where they crush it with a log. Soon after, Trojak receives a message from Sator the Eagle, informing him that his 
friend Edith has been captured by strange white men. Trojak learns that Edith's ship was stopped by a Nazi U-boat and she was taken prisoner and brought to their camp inland. Trojak is outraged by this and sets off to rescue her immediately. After freeing Edith, they are surrounded by Nazi soldiers and are forced to surrender. But Trojak is not one to give up so easily and he manages to free himself and destroy the Nazi U-boat using their own cannon. Trojak and Edith then escape to the safety of the jungle. With the Nazis still threatening his jungle home, Trojak vows to act against them. The fifth comic is titled The Origin of Mavex the Super Robot. The author and artist are unknown. The story starts with Bolo, a fifth dimensional scientist who creates a race of robot slaves modeled after human beings. His first creation, Marvex, has enough free will to revolt against his master and destroy his machines, causing an explosion that sends Marvex into the Earth dimension. In the Earth dimension, Marvex helps tow a man's car to a service station and buys clothing to blend in with the humans. He then saves Clara Crandall and her father from a burning building, but unfortunately Clara's father dies and Marvex learns that spies stole his new armor, coating formula. Marvex sets out to get the new formula back and slays the spies before turning the formula over to the authorities. Clara is smitten with Mavex, but he reveals to her that he is a robot and they can only be friends. The story explores themes of artificial intelligence, free will, and the relationship between humans and robots. The next comic is titled Captain Strong of the Foreign Legion. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Jack Alderman. It is about Captain Strong and his mission in the deserts of Algeria. The captain and his team were sent to investigate a series of caravan robberies and to establish an outpost in the region. However, they soon find out that Ali Hassan and his band of thieves were responsible for the attacks. In a fierce fight, the bandits were taken by surprise and fled the scene, but Captain Strong disguised himself as one of them and infiltrated their camp. He overheard Ali's plan to attack their camp at night while they slept and quickly rushed back to warn his team. They decided to set up a trap and create dummies to fool the thieves. When Ali and his bandits attacked the camp, they fell right into the trap and were taken down by the foreign legion. Ali was captured and the robbery problem was finally put to an end in the region. Captain Strong and his team successfully completed their mission and made the region safe once again. Okay, so the next seven comics are in the Daring Mystery comic number four. They were all released in March of 1940. So this next comic is titled Busting a Banker. This comic was written by Will Haar and illustrated by Maurice Gutworth. It's about an assistant district attorney, Dennis Burton, who witnesses a bank robbery and decides to take matters into his own hands. He puts on his purple mask and heads out to ambush the crooks at their hideout. After a failed attempt, he learns that the crooks are working for the owner of the bank, a sickly man named Mr. Waylon. Burton follows the chauffeur to the hideout and realizes that Waylon is the mastermind behind the robbery. He then rides the same train as Waylon and poses as a waiter to get the drop on the crooks. After beating them up and locking them in their hotel room, he goes to get the police. However, when they return to the room, they find that the crooks have escaped. Undeterred, Barton chases after them on a motorcycle as Purple Mask and manages to catch them before turning them over to the authorities. The next day, Burton hands over the recovered money to the district attorney, bringing the bank robbery case to a close. The next comic is titled The Zeppelin Attack. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Maurice Gutworth. In this story, we follow K-4, a skilled pilot, and his team, the Sky Devils, on a mission to track down and destroy a Nazi Zeppelin that has been causing havoc in London. After spotting the enemy Zeppelin in a hidden mountain hangar, K-4 sends his colleague, Ronald Wolverston Claude, to the infiltrate the base. Disguised as a Nazi worker, Ronald manages to gather some critical information that the Germans are planning to bomb Paris next. Armed with the new intelligence, K-4 and the Sky Devils follow the Zeppelin by plane. They disable the Zeppelin's gunner, and K-4 boards the enemy craft. Once inside, he single-handedly fights off the Nazi soldiers and sets the Zeppelin to crash, but not before parachuting out in the nick of time. This daring mission by K-4 and the Sky Devils saved countless lives and stopped the Nazis from causing more destruction. Their bravery and courage are truly inspiring and reminds us of the sacrifices made by many to protect our freedom. The next comic is titled On the Trail of Murrow. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Larry Antoinette. It's about Monaco the Magician and his latest adventure to help his friend Josie. Monaco's old nemesis, Murrow, has stolen secret papers that reveal the fortifications in the Panama Canal in Central America. Monaco tries to stop the thief, but he manages to escape with the documents. So Monaco and Josie follow Murrow into another plane and find out his plan to take over the fortifications to control the canal. Murrow's plane shoots at them and Monaco uses his magic to deflect the bullets and to create obstacles, causing Murrow's plane to crash. But Murrow is not giving up easily. He captures Josie, ties Monaco to a cactus, and tries to escape. Monaco breaks free and saves Josie from falling out of the plane. Uh, using his magic, Monaco suspends Murrow and his accomplice in the air and grows in size to enter the plane with Josie. Before they can take care of Murrow, he escapes with black magic. Monaco and Josie deliver the stolen plans to the government, and Monaco tells Josie that he must continue his hunt for his old enemy. The next comic is titled The Spike Green Case. The writer and artist are unknown. It's about the exciting story of Clara Crandall and her robot companion Marvex, the super robot, and their mission to clear their friend Jim Hansen's name. Jim is sitting on death row for a crime he did not commit, and Clara and Marvex are determined to prove his innocence. One day on his way home, Marvex spots a bank robbery in progress being committed by a notorious criminal named Spike Green and his men. Thanks to Marvex's interference, Green and his gang are captured by the police and sent to the same prison where Hansen is being held. Later on, Marvex is ambushed by some of Green's men and dumped in the river. But 
he survives the attempt and overhears how they are plotting to break Spike out of prison because, as it turns out, he was the real culprit behind the crimes that Jim had been accused of. Marvex immediately rounds up the gang members and rushes to the prison where Spike Green is already causing a riot in an attempt to break out. When Marvex arrives, he takes on all the rioting prisoners on his own and while he has superior strength and durability over the crooks, he is soon overpowered and strapped into the electric chair. With the chair turned on, Spike and his men leave him to die. But the robot survives and it breaks free. Confronting the crooks in the courtyard, Marvex knocks them all out and then forces Green to confess to the crimes that he has framed Jim for, clearing his name. It's a thrilling adventure that showcases the power and determination of Marvex the super robot and his commitment to justice. The next comic is titled Man Don Gorman. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Jack Alderman. It's about an exciting adventure involving Don Gordon, an ace pilot and government agent who has developed a new jet engine that can travel at 1,000 miles per hour. After busting up some spies who were trying to steal his engine's plans, Don meets with Anson Dichter, the purchasing agent for the Nazis, who wants to buy this new jet engine. However, Don refuses to sell it to them as he intends to turn it over to the US government after finishing his tests. To test his engine's long range capabilities, Don needs to test a device on cross-country flights. Chester Orson, the manager of National Aero, arranges for a number of commercial planes to be used in tests of the new engine. Many of the world's wealthy starlets purchased tickets on these cross-country flights that would take them from one coast to another in a matter of minutes. Unfortunately, all the airlines with the prototype engines go missing, including one carrying Don's fiance, airline stewardess Betty Nestor. When all 25 planes go missing, Don is called to Washington, D.C. to meet with military staff. They conclude that it was the work of espionage and assign Don on the case to try and track down the missing jets. However, on his mission, he is taken prisoner and left in a room with a time bomb. Don manages to escape and calls in the military to help him find the missing jets. They discover that Nazi spies have impounded the jets and taken the passengers hostage. Don and his team storm the area and take everyone hostage, including Anson Dichter and Chester Orson, who were working together to steal the engine for the Nazis. Later, Don explains that his engines give off a specific magnetic wavelength that allowed him to track them to their location. And that's how Don Gordon was able to recover the missing jets and save the day. The next comic is titled The World of Savages. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Jack Binder. It's placed in the 4040 universe. It's about an exciting adventure about a man named Breeze Barton, who travels to a parallel dimension called Miracle City with his friend Anne Barclay. When Breeze returns to Earth, he discovers that it's 1995, but the world is vastly different from the one he left behind. A massive war has devastated the planet, and most of humanity has evolved into tribes of savages. Breeze, being the hero he is, takes charge and suggests that they try to rebuild society, but they are soon attacked by a band of savages and they have to fight them off, and suggests that they make peace with them, but the savage's chief would only allow that if someone defeated him in lone combat. So Breeze steps up to the challenge and defeats the savage chief in an epic one-on-one -on -one fight. Breeze is made the new leader of the savages and tells people that they will work together to make a new society. But the former chief attempts to drown Breeze in the river, but Anne saves the day by shooting him dead. Despite this, Breeze manages to survive the attempt on his life and thanks Anne for her help. It's a thrilling tale of adventure, courage, and the will to survive in a world gone mad. The next comic is titled The Secret Soldier. This comic was written and illustrated by Joe Simon. In this continuation of the story, we will follow a wild man known as Trojak who is living in the jungle that's under threat from the Nazis. Trojak decides to gather an army of natives to fight back against the invaders. Meanwhile, Edith, who's also in the jungle, receives a visit from her brother Jerry, who's with the Nazis. Jerry tells her not to resist the Germans, but when Trojak and his army prepare to attack, Edith manages to convince Trojak not to fight. However, when the Nazi soldiers attempt to capture Trojak, he resists, leading to the Nazis to take Edith prisoner to lure him out. Fortunately, Jerry is secretly a spy for the allied forces and he's been setting up explosives to destroy the enemy base but before he can do that he is discovered and captured Trojak himself is also captured and they are all reunited in prison with the tnt set to explode whenever someone pushes down the detonating plunger Trojak calls his parrot friend galu and has the bird to bring a message to his tiger balu so that the tiger can set off the explosives balu succeeds in his mission destroying the nazi base and crushing the general to death in the debris with their prison smashed open Trojak, edith and jerry make a run for it the next seven comics are in the daring mystery comic number five they were all released in april of 1940 this comic is titled The Jelly of Doom. This comic was written by George Captain and illustrated by Harry Sale. It's about Fiery Mask, the hero who saved the day from an evil scientist named Dork. Dork is a mad scientist who has an army at his command and wants to take over the world. He unleashes a protoplasm creature that consumes human flesh on the city, causing chaos and destruction. However, Fiery Mask, a superhero, jumps into action and assesses the situation. When Dork's henchmen capture a young woman, Fiery Mask realizes that his powers make him safe from the creature and he fights his way through the protoplasmic form to get to Dork's tower. There, he battles Dork's savage creature and other traps easily. Fiery Mask then melts his way into the room where Dork has the young woman captured and fights his opponent. During the fight, Dork accidentally shoots out a window, letting his own protoplasmic creature, which ironically consumes him. Fiery Mask then destroys the machine that created the creature, putting its rampage to an end, and flies the captured woman to safety. Thanks to his quick thinking and bravery, Fiery Mask saves the city from destruction and stops Dork from taking over the world. 
This next comic is titled The Devil Flower. This comic was written and illustrated by Joe Simon. It's about a jungle adventure involving a quest for the devil flower, a rare plant that is believed to have healing powers. After Jerry, Edith's brother, falls ill, the native doctor of Trojak's village determines that the only possible cure is the devil flower. So Trojak and Edith set out to find it. However, spies from the Gimba tribe overhear their mission and plan on stopping them from harming their god, the devil flower. When the spies attack Trojak and Edith, they manage to easily defeat them with the help of Baloo the tiger. The Gimbians, unable to convince Trojak to give up his quest, commit suicide. The tribal leader of the Gimba tribe, who receives visions from the devil flower, sends a pack of hyenas to attack Trojak and his comrades. But Trojak, Edith, and Baloo are able to fight them off. They then manage to navigate through crocodile-infested waters and make it to the island where the Gimba tribe is located. After fighting off an ape guarding the devil flower, they obtain the nectar they need to cure Jerry. However, the Gimbians chase them and try to capture them. Unfortunately, Baloo wrecks the Gimbians' boats so that Trojak, Edith, and Jerry can escape in their raft without being followed. They eventually return to Trojak's tribe and Jerry is cured with the devil flower nectar. So that's the story of how Trojak and his friends fought off a pack of hyenas, defeated an ape, and escaped the Gimba tribe to find the rare devil flower to cure Jerry. The next comic is titled The High Cost of Fighting. We don't know who the author was, but we do know that the art was done by Maurice Gutworth. It's about a daring mission of K4, Renee, and Ronald as they sneak into a Nazi naval and airbase to take photographs of their operations. While Renee and Ronald are on their mission, they are spotted and attacked, forcing them to land and surrender to the Nazis. They soon learn that the Nazis are planning to launch an attack on allied forces. Renee and Ronald are determined to warn their comrades, so they knock out their guards, steal their clothing, and sneak into the telegraph room to contact home base. K4 receives the message and rushes off to save his friends, ordering an air fleet to follow him. When the Nazi attack begins, the air fleet arrives and bombs the Nazi base, catching them off guard. Renee and Ronald try to escape on a train, but are recognized and forced to flee off the roof, where K4 rescues them. The next comic is titled The Origin of Monaco. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Larry Antoinette. During a voyage to America, Monaco puts on a spectacular show for the ship's crew, and afterwards he agrees to meet with Lady Olga and Lady Anne. The women are curious about Monaco's unique abilities and want to know how he learned his magic tricks. Monaco reveals that as a child, his parents were missionaries in a far off region in India where a tribe practiced the black arts and magic. Sadly, the tribe killed his parents, but their leader took Monaco under his wing and taught him the ways of the dark arts. However, after the colonials wiped out the tribe for their misdeeds, Monaco was sent to England to receive an education. Upon his graduation, he returned to India to right the wrongs that his former captors had done and now uses his powers for good. While Monaco finishes his story, Lady Olga's jewels are stolen. With his magic powers, Monaco quickly comes to her aid and captures the two thieves responsible for the robbery. Lady Olga is overjoyed to have her jewels returned and the two ladies are amazed by Monaco's magical abilities. The next comic is titled Battle of the Robots. We do not know who the author was, but the art was done by Jack Alderman. It's an exciting story about Marvex and Dr. Nar. Marvex, a superhero with incredible powers, had been on a mission to capture some criminals when he received a message from the mad scientist Dr. Nar. Dr. Nar had become obsessed with Marvex and wanted to learn his secrets, so he had sent the message as a trap. When Marvex arrived, he was ambushed by primitive robots controlled by Dr. Nar. He was taken captive to the scientist lab, but he managed to break free and was about to attack Dr. Nar when he was hit by a magnetic ray that immobilized him. Thankfully, Marvex was able to call his friend and Clara Crandall for help, and she came to his rescue. She destroyed the controls for the magnetic ray and smashed the robots. Marvex chased Dr. Nar, who jumped out a window to his death, but not before setting off an explosion in his lab. Marvex and Clara fled the scene and were able to capture the remaining crooks before they could escape by boat. It was a thrilling adventure, and Marvex had once again saved the day. The next comic is titled Rebuilding the World. We don't know who the author was, but the art was done by Jack Binder. It is also placed in the 4040 universe. Reese Barton and his followers have established a new civilization, but their peaceful existence is threatened by the arrival of a group of thieves who seek to loot their fortress. Reese and his team capture one of the thieves and use them to send a message to the rest of the thieves, inviting them to join their new society. However, the leader of thieves, Sabar, is not pleased with this invitation and launches an invasion on Barton's village. Reese and his comrade, Anne Barclay, fight back, using their rocket belts to attack from above. Unfortunately, Anne's belt is damaged and they both are captured. But this doesn't stop Breeze and Anne. They break free and join the battle against the raiders. In the end, Savar is defeated and the other raiders surrender when they hear Barton's offer to join his new civilization. It's a thrilling story of conflict and the triumph of good over evil. The 40th comic in this series is titled Meet the Falcon. We don't know who the author was, but we do know that the art was done by Maurice Gutworth. It's about an assistant district attorney, Carl Burgess, and his alter ego, the Falcon, as they track down the culprit behind a mysterious death. When Burgess arrives at the scene, he discovers a wand of death belonging to Dr. Sunga, who had previously threatened to curse the victim. Burgess confronts Sunga, who claims that he cannot be arrested because no one believes in curses. Frustrated with Sunga's arrogance, Burgess transforms into the Falcon to take matters into his own hands. However, Sunga sends one of his minions to eliminate the Falcon, but 
but he fails. The Falcon captures the thug and interrogates him, but he suddenly dies after being mailed a wand of death by Sunga. Upon examining the package, the Falcon realizes that the wand is not the murder weapon, but the package itself, which is charged with a lethal dose of static electricity. When the Falcon is mailed a package himself, he deduces that it's also charged with static electricity. He rushes to Sunga's home and confronts him with the truth. The Falcon throws the package at Sunga and it electrocutes him to death, putting an end to this threat. Okay, well, thank you for watching the second episode. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this amazing art form and some of the fascinating stories and characters that have been created over the years. If you're a fan of comics or just curious to learn more, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you have any thoughts or comments, be sure to share them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.